All right, ladies and gentlemen, Baron here. We're flying the ME two six two A one A U four Schwalbe. So this plane had two prototypes. It is a designed bomber destroyer. It has a fifty millimeter auto loading tank killing gun, anti tank gun. That's what it was originally designed for. It was obviously modified to fit in this aerial platform and kill bombers. But the cool thing about it, since it was designed as a bomber killer, and this is going to be great, because um, we're going to get to see it against tanks and against bombers, is uh, that it can load HVAP rounds. So that means we can crack tanks, at least in theory. So there's some medium tanks, so a 50 millimeter from the right angle should allow us to destroy some tanks, you know, in theory. Um, now, if you're a fan of this gun, and let's listen to it real quick. This is what it sounds like within the cockpit. And you may have noticed, yes, it's an auto loader, and yes, it's very fast. You can even see the recoil on the gun there. Pretty cool, overall. Um, but if you like this gun, it's actually based off the BK-5, the Mark 214 any tank gun is anyway. And it was armed on ME-410s, as well as a JU-88, which was designed for night attack. So I think that's really cool stuff. I'd love to see this gun on other Luftwaffe aerial platforms, obviously. So, got ourselves a medium tank coming in from the front. Decent chance of, uh, you know, hitting that. Okay, so basically one right through it. Now, this gun had high velocity. So while it is an auto loader, the high velocity makes it accurate at distance. And this thing was designed to be able to shoot B-17s from outside of the protective, you know, basically covering fire of the B-17s 50 caliber machine guns. Because it's a porcupine of basically aerial defense up there with all those 50s, especially if you're flying in a bomber formation. The Germans and Luftwaffe had a huge issue with the Allied bombing campaign. So they came up with all manner of creative ways to destroy those bombers. I think one of the coolest of which is obviously this plane right here. So we're going to come in from behind this B-17 bomber formation. And then we're going to try to pop a lot of them. Now keep in mind we may have to switch out our uh, you know, ammo belts because we're firing anti-tank rounds which are designed to penetrate. And with, with planes you generally, you know, especially... With unarmored planes, you don't really want these penetrating rounds. You want something that has some, you know, like an HEIT round. Which uh, also you have the option for. The Mingenschoss rounds. Those are what you want to use against planes. But since we wanted to test it out on tanks, which we were able to pop Shermans within one or two hits. Um, now we're going to go in and see how these things do. We may have to aim a little more. But basically what you do in actuality is kind of slow down stay out of range and take your pot shots without really getting in close enough to deal with the 50 cals that was a nice hit from distance it's incredibly accurate now that one's just taking so long to do because of the ammunition rounds. Um, I believe we actually jammed, which was another issue with the 50 millimeter autoloader. And look at those B-17s, man. They're just chewing me up. So we are going to try out the other rounds and check it out. <laughs> Goodbye. So give me one moment and we'll try out the HEIT rounds against B-17s. Alright, so here we go. What we were using were these HVAP high velocity armor piercing tracer shells you also have the option for armor piercing tracer shells now these would be used against aerial armored targets but since we're going after B-17s we want to blow those suckers up knock wings off take engines out just do all manner of you know tomfoolery on these things so we're going to use the Mingenschoss rounds which are high explosive incendiary tracers so let's get to it Alright, so we saw what this baby could do against Sherman's 
We're loaded up with the Mingan Shoss rounds. And now it's time to take it to the B-17s. We've got our high explosive incendiary tracer rounds on a 50 millimeter auto loading cannon with velocity, meaning greater accuracy. So this is going to be pretty sweet, I imagine. Look at that, one to two hits on a B-17. Good lord, ladies and gentlemen. The B-17s are going to have a very difficult time with this plane in the area, but keep in mind, this ME-262, and we're in arcade mode for testing purposes, and by testing I mean we just want to shoot some stuff. B-17s dogfighting, okay, I don't recommend it. Let's see, enemy gunner's unconscious. Not sure what they're up to. Uh, they may be drunk, but... This plane, a lot of people, you may you may be asking yourself, like, uh, you know, I well, are we going to be able to really fly B-17s anymore? Oh, hell yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely mal. Because, quite frankly, this plane is just going to be easy fodder for most, most enemy fighters. And look at that. Look at those 50s. And that's kind of what the purpose of this plane is, is to shoot from distance well out of range of those 50s. Let's try to do that, actually. With that velocity. Come on. Give me that hit. Those Mingan shots rounds, though. Alright, that worked. So, obviously, once you get a feel for it, um, you'd be able to take bombers out of distance. Like, that's auto-loading high velocity. Usually when you have auto loading you kind of sacrifice the velocity of the shell. In this case, well let's just say those Germans are pretty dang good at what they do. Oh there's a hit. Come on baby. Oh, reloading. So we're gonna pull off because I don't want to close the distance on that last one. It's gonna gonna be the final test bed here. Where we are going to shoot from distance. And it's arcade mode, so at a certain point I get that aiming reticle, but this would be fun practice for you to do. You load up a custom battle, get your ME 262 A1A U4 out, and then just practice sniping B 17s to get a feel for the drop, the trajectory of the shell, the angles. You can fire like two or three at once, which is pretty awesome. And you can tell I'm pretty inaccurate at about one and a half kilometers out. I think, there you go. Once I'm between one and a half, ooh. Now this is arcade mode, so I've noticed that it kind of stopped me from firing. So in, um, you know, a realistic battle, the gun would jam. This gun had issues with jamming. But here we were basically up against, you know, some bombers in arcade mode. Now let's try out... Nope. But if you like this gun, expect it in the future, I think would be relatively reasonable to see it on the ME410, the auto-loading version. That's what I'm talking about, the auto-loading version. Because we already have a 50mm ME410. And then the JU88 P4. Those things would be pretty awesome. Anyway, that was the ME262 um, A, 1A U4. But as you can see right here, we have four ME262s now. And let's go back. Yeah, I want to quit. So we go to the research tab. And what's interesting is the U4 is under the attacker line. You, you see where basically once you get to the JU-87 G's and down you have this attacker line. So it's not down the jet fighter line and that's good because it's not a jet fighter even though it's kind of listed as one. It's more of a bomber interceptor and you could even use it, um, although outside of its intended role, as a tank cracker. A Panzanaka. So uh, the Puxistora. Puxistora. 
But the cool thing, another new one, is the uh, Heimatschutzavai, which basically are rocket boosted interceptors. So we're going to take a test flight. Alright, so now we have the ME262 C2B Heimatschutzavai. Heimatschutze. You know what, to my German fans, I gave you the old college try. Now, what's interesting about this plane is basically the engines are a little upped and then you can see right above the engine which we'll see very soon are rocket boosts to basically assist in takeoff and building up speed so we're going to keep the uh, but the, the big point about this is only a single prototype of this plane was made and it's in the main production line for the German Air Force the Luftwaffe it's not a gift plane or you know a premium plane it's a main production line so basically that's set in precedent within this game which precedent has already been made kind of for prototype planes and even some paper planes in certain cases but anyway let's fire off these rockets so you can see right there the rockets come out from both sides which are pretty just awesome looking so now we're going to hit the uh, full throttle here, because we're nearing the end of this runway. We want to get up to about 250. We're going to easily be able to do that. This thing's a bad boy, man, I tell you what. So the ME262 C1A was huge. Um, it was a, It's a great plane to fly. So, and this is on realistic, you know, experience right here. So that's just how easy this thing is to take off and build up speed. So we're going to strafe a ground vehicle and then kind of get a feel for just how fast we can go. Oh, I love those sounds. Oh yeah, baby. Check that out. Anyway, the Luftwaffe always had issue with jets, but now with the 1.39 patch and then with the you know upcoming 1.41, the Luftwaffe arguably is one of, if not the most, at least in the top two, most interesting jet lines. So here's our IS just going crazy. Let's just see what happens as we start to cavitate. Reduce speed. <laughs> Look at that. Exceeded the speed limit of a thousand kilometers per hour. Boosters have already been ignited. So we're going to jump out of our plane at a thousand kilometers per hour. That guy would be probably dead. But anyway, those are the new German jets. They are pretty awesome. Both of them are rank 5. The ME262 A1U4 with its 50mm auto loading cannon and the Heimatschutze Vi, which is also tier 5. And it's an upgrade of the C1A. This one had one rocket, this one's got two. So it's pretty awesome. Look at that. You've got four ME262s to choose from now. Options on one of the most renowned jet fighters of World War II. My name's Baron. I thank you for watching. Make sure to pull the trigger on the like button. And for the love of games, subscribe and keep up with all of the uh, patch 1.41 coverage over here on Baron's channel. Now we're basically, we could be considered medium tanks, or excuse me, medium bombers, but I feel like more than like, you know, in all actuality, we're more of uh, gunships because this thing's got a 75 millimeter howitzer and 850s on the front. So that looked like it got killed by 50 caliber machine guns, but Japanese light tanks were known to be rather thinly armed. We're gonna try this again.